Hello and welcome to this quick tutorial where we want to take a look at how to create a translucent plastic material inside of Blender with Octane. And without spending uh, more time, uh, we can get into it. Um, so my setup is pretty simple. Down here on the left, we have um, a simple HDRI setup. I will link a video um, for setting up an HDRI inside of Blender with Octane in the upper right hand corner right now. Um, but I don't want to talk about this in detail in this video. So we can just um, put this down here. Uh, up here, right above that, we have the rendered view and um, we will start without a material of course in a second. And on the right side over here is our shader editor where all the magic for creating this material will happen. Okay, so to start the process of creating this material, I stripped my object of um, the material completely. So if I go into the rendered view right now, you can see that we just have the object that we want to apply our material to. And uh, the first thing that we want to make sure is that our object that we want to apply the material to is selected. You can see my object is selected by the uh, orange outline over here on the rendered view uh, or the 3D viewer to be more specific. And um, because the text of my uh, cylinder up here in the upper right hand corner is orange as well. When we did that, we can go into um, one of our windows that we have open inside of Blender and go into this top menu up here. And we can click on shader editor in this menu. And that will open up our shader editor. In here, we can change the um, setting to object because we want to apply a material to our object. When we did that, we will have this new button up here. And if we click on it, it will automatically create a universal material for our object. We don't need a universal material for this uh, material that we want to create. So just click on your universal material. You see that it is selected by the white outline around the node. And then we can press delete. Like that, we only have our material output node. And this is exactly how we want it to be. Now we want to add a specular material and we do that by pressing shift A and we will take the search and type in specular material down here we have it. Just click on it and then we will take the material out of our specular material and we will plug it into the surface of our material output node. Perfect. Now you can see here on the right, right hand side in the rendered view that our object looks like less. We will change this look quite a bit in a second. So the first thing that I want to do is inside of my specular material node, we want to select the color that we want our plastic to be. And we do that under the transmission. In my case, I want a light green like that. It looks a lot darker over here, but when we apply some more things um, to our specular material, it will lighten up quite a bit. Then we will go into the roughness. And for me, um, I will put that um, to 0 0.02, just like that. Um, in case you are looking for a slightly different look um, with your plastic translucent material, then you can change that up later or even now if you are sure what you're doing. Um, now we want to go to the index of refraction. If this is automatically set to 1.5 for you, that's totally fine. If not, then please set it to 1.5 like I did here. Okay, so let's continue with our translucent plastic material. After we now set our IRR, um, we want to also check fake shadows down here. Just check it. It will make calculations much easier and we will get render results a little bit faster. Okay, um, so far so good. Now we want to add a medium to our uh, material and that's actually pretty easy. We just have to go to the medium section of inside of our specular material 
it's down here and there's this little plus icon. I just click on it and then a little menu opens up. In here we want to go to Octane Medium and under here we want to select the Scattering Medium. Just click on it and click again in order for this scattering node to be applied to our uh, material. On the left side you can see in the rendered view in our 3D viewport that the material has turned completely black, at least almost completely black. There's a little bit of green up here. Um, don't worry, we will change that in a second. Um, the thing that we have to do is we have to go into the density and I will set the density to 1 for now and you can see the green is returning to our material. Okay. Now we have to add another node that we need, and that's the float to grayscale node. So we press Shift A again, and we search for float to grayscale. It's not here yet. Do we have it? Yes, down here, float to grayscale. Just click on it, and there we have our float to grayscale node. We take the texture out of our float to grayscale node, and we plug it into the absorption and the scattering of our scattering node. Okay, so next we want to change the value of our flow to grayscale node to 7. And now comes a really important part. You can see that our material has um, changed quite a bit. It's much lighter green right now than before. And that's due to the value that we put into the absorption and the scattering, but also the density. And depending on how your material should look, um, then you have to apply other values to that. So if you have a really big object, um, just play around with the density, with the density and the value for the absorption and the scattering till it looks right for you. In my case, these values are totally fine and I will stick to them for now. Okay, so let me put these nodes up here so that we have a little bit more space down here because although our translucent plastic material looks actually quite fine right now, I want to add just a little touch to it for um, this material to be even more realistic. The most easiest thing that you can do is applying little sparks, little um, glittery spots in, inside of this plastic. Um, it just adds a little bit more of detail and realism to the um, material in my eyes. Um, so uh, you will see a little example of that right now on the screen so that you know what I mean by uh, saying that we want to add little um, sparkles and little glittery bits to our plastic material. How do we do that? That's pretty easy. We just have to press Shift A again and we want to add a flakes node. Here it is. And we take the texture out of our flakes node and we put it into the normal connector of our uh, specular material, just like that. And uh, now you can see here on the left side that these flakes are actually quite big. And that's not really what we want. We want a much smaller flake size. And luckily we have a slider in our flake, flakes uh, node over here where we can change the flake size. And I actually um, took note of the flake size that I want and that is 0 0.1. And like this you can see that the little flakes have disappeared in our rendered view for now, but when the uh, rendering is a little bit more complete, you will see that there are these little spots. And you already can see that there are certain white spots on our plastic material. And that's exactly what we want. Um, this would be it for that. If you have problems with uh, these flakes, you can also transform them by a UV W transform, or you can even change the projection of these. Okay, so far so good. I also want to add another detail to our plastic, and that is um, that I want little scratches to be in this plastic because I want it to be a pretty soft plastic that easily gets scratched. For that I will use um, 
yeah, smudges nodes or, or smudges textures. Um, you can find these on many websites. I will put a link to the one I'm using into the video description and uh, I will just drag and drop it in here. Okay, so I just dragged my um, image texture into the shader uh, editor here in Blender and it was added in by uh, Octane automatically as an RGB image and that's exactly what we want. I can take the texture out of this and we want to plug it into the bump connector of our specular material. When I put the legacy gamma of our um, RGB image to one, then we can see these scratches appearing going from the outer part of our object to the center of the cylindrical object. And that's not what we want. We want it to evenly be distributed over our object. And we can achieve that by changing the projection. So I will press Shift A again and I will search for a box transform, a box projection. I'm sorry. Down here we have the box projection and we take the box projection out and we plug it into the projection connector of our RGB image node. Perfect. And in my case, that will automatically be at a scale that is perfect for my object. If that isn't the case for you, then you can, of course, uh, take this little plus icon here and click on it and it will automatically create a 3D transformation node where you can change the scale. Um, but for me that looks totally fine. You can see that there are little scratches in our material and we also have these sparkles. So that should be it for my tutorial. I really like this plastic material and I think it adds a lot of detail um, to the um, smaller bits of this um, object because you can see these little flakes and scratches. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video and you could follow along. Um, if you liked it, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel. I have quite a few videos about Blender with Octane on my channel and uh, I hope you can learn a bit and have fun with Blender and Octane. I see you next time and till then, have a nice week.